Hello everyone, this is Dr. Michael Shear with Learn Lodi, a free resource on how to market treatment plan place and maintain locator overdenture implants. In this video, we're going to go ahead and describe a radiopaque PBS liner and CBCT guide technique to go ahead and utilize a everyday and commonly available CBCT scanning software to go ahead and fabricate everything that we need to have a computerized surgical guide um, fabricated and designed and then executed clinically. First and foremost, we're going to go ahead and describe one approach, which is the anatomage in vivo scanning protocol that I helped develop for them. First step is we're going to go ahead and place a PVS radio opaque liner in the patient's denture. Second, we're going to go ahead and make a CBCT scan of the patient with soft tissue separation, either with cheek retractors or with cotton rolls. Third, we're going to go ahead and make a CBCT scan of the denture alone with the PVS outside of the mouth. So there's going to be a total of two CBCT scans. Finally, we're going to go ahead and import DICOM files into InVivo and repeat with the denture scan, trace the nerve, place the implant in the ideal bone position, and then finally upload the plan to an automage for merging and then STL file fabrication and surgical guide uh, creation. First and foremost, it's important to talk about where we've come from with full arch soft tissue supported guides. Historically, what we've always done is we've used a radio-opaque acrylic resin type material as a duplicate or a wash inside of a patient's denture. Utilizing the products that you see in front of you here on the screen, we would historically go ahead and make a duplicate copy of the patient's denture using um, alginate and a uh, Lang denture duplicating flask or a putty impression technique like is shown on the YouTube videos. This um, method clearly has worked, however it's quite laborious and it also does require multiple visits and multiple appointments. This method is also pretty much a um, bystanding historical technique these days just because some of the newer techniques which I'm going to show you have replaced wholly this uh, approach. Most of the scan imaging centers prefer not to use radio opaque uh, uh, acrylic materials or barium sulfate anymore. It just creates a lot of scatter on the radiograph. The commonly new approach is to use a radio opaque PVS impression material on the inside of a patient's denture. What we're going to do is, is we're essentially going to reline the patient's denture using this PVS impression material and then do a CBCT scan of the patient wearing that in the mouth. The idea is, is that we still accomplish the same clinical goals of being able to visually see the restorative plan of the patient's full arch situation in the CBCT scanning software as what you would see here on the left, which is the barium sulfate guide, and on the right, which is the patient's own existing denture with a radio-opaque PBS impression material. The big difference here is, is that both images give you a very similar appearance. However, the one on the left goes ahead and has to take two visits. You'd have to fit the denture. You have a laboratory bill. The one on the right can be done in a matter of approximately three to four minutes. First step, we're going to go ahead and take our radio-opaque PBS impression material and without any adhesive or any sort of primer bonding agent or anything on the patient's denture, just dry it out and we're going to inject the radio-opaque PVS material onto the intaglio surface of the patient's denture. We're going to then take a spatula and very similar to what we would go ahead and do for an everyday clinical or laboratory reline impression, we're going to take our radio-opaque PVS impression material and then just roll our borders it's important to get nice rolled borders with this technique. As you'll see in the later portion of this presentation, we rely upon those to give us some of our radiographic markers. We're then going to go ahead and have the patient just kind of pull his cheeks apart a little bit while using cheek retractors to make it easy. Seat the mandibular denture. Have the patient go ahead and just very lightly close into a centric position. After ensuring that the denture is seated down all the way, we remove the clips have the patient do a closed mouth reline technique, and then do border molding procedures just as normal. Using the closed mouth impression technique, we're gonna go ahead and verify that the patient is lightly biting into centric occlusion or centric relation, or MICP. It's important not to have the patient bite down too hard just because you don't want a lot of show through of our reline material. Completing our border molding using the tongue, we're gonna to have the patient stick out the tongue, move it side to side, bite down and then just gently swallow a little bit. Completing the cheek side and the lip side border molding. The impression material is removed after approximately three to four minutes. 
And then we can go ahead and take that back to our counter and do some slight trimming of our radio opaque PVS material. Using a 15 blade or a um, Bard Parker handle blade, we can go ahead and just lightly trim all of the excess of our radio opaque impression material. It's important to get a nice roll of the border here. The roll of the border is going to ensure that we have radiographic appearance of this material um, in the CBCD scan. Being careful not to go ahead and just be gentle with our um, blade here, just watching our fingers as we trim, carefully teasing this away. If you have a little bit excess, it actually helps us to have a slightly irregular cutting surface, meaning you don't want it exactly perfect all the way around. You do want some finning of it, like as shown here, and some of those points. As I seat that back into the mouth, we're going to go ahead and have the patient just go ahead and verify that everything has been done correctly. We're going to repeat this procedure as a clinical demonstration for the maxillary as well. We seated the mandibular arch. We repeat the procedure for the maxillary arch, injecting onto a dried intaglio surface, and then using a spatula to move our impression material around. By doing so, it's going to verify that I have an equal distribution of our radiopaque PVS impression material everywhere around the maxillary arch and verifying that now we're ready to go ahead and seat into the mouth. With the patient also with a couple of cheek retractors just to make this task easy, we seat that onto the maxillary ridge with a moderate amount of pressure. Removing our cheek clips, we're gonna have the patient just very carefully close back into a centric position and do border molding motions as normal. Tugging on the cheeks, the lips, is going to verify that I have a relatively decent reline style impression for this technique. After complete polymerization of our material, material is fully set, we go ahead and remove the maxillary prosthesis. And again, just like the mandibular prosthesis, we're going to go ahead and lightly trim around the peripheries, ensuring that the border remains intact. Taking that same 15 blade, just holding it at a perpendicular angle, is going to ensure that we have trimmed this material properly. The goal here is, is we just don't want any of that impression material to be over the occlusal surfaces of the dentition. If it's not exactly even or perfect, that actually helps us with the clinical procedure. After completely trimming, we're going to go ahead and replace the maxillary arch back into the patient's uh, edentulous ridge and verify that everything is done correctly. Ensuring that the patient properly closes into a center position is going to verify that I've done this at the correct vertical dimension and CR position or CO position. Now importantly, what we do want to do is, is take a series of either cotton rolls or an optrogate or some sort of plastic cheek retractors and just retract the soft tissues. Also placing two cotton rolls on the lingual surface is going to verify that the tongue is away from the borders of the denture during the CBCT scan. We take a series of cotton rolls to create this air pocket around the acrylic resin. So if we're doing just a mandibular arch, we use seven cotton rolls, two on the lingual, three on the buccal, and two on the occlusal surfaces. Unless you're doing full arch, fully guided prosthetics as well, there is no reason for us to go ahead and utilize a CBCT scan with the patient biting down with the teeth together. It's important here we want to create a soft tissue pocket around all of the dentures and prostheses, which on the maxillary arch we're going to be scanning this patient to. We place three cotton rolls on the maxillary arch also, only on the buckle. When the patient goes for a CBCT scan, we instruct the patient not to put the tongue at the uh, palatal portion of the denture, but just to keep it suspended in between the cotton rolls. Now importing my DICOMs into my Anonymage comb beam software, I can go ahead and distinctly see the outline of the dentures on the upper right portion of the screen. Also showing you the bright radio opaque impression material clearly displayed as the white portion on the patient's underneath side of the denture. Slicing through different mo modes on this software is going to allow me to distinctly see the soft tissue appearance of the patient's edentulous ridge underneath the patient's prosthesis giving me the restorative appearance at the same time as it does for the radiographic appearance of the bone volumes. 
Now this case has already been planned just to demonstrate to show you how this all comes together. By doing so, I can upload all of the scans to anatomage, meaning the patient scan wearing the CBCT radio opaque PVS impression material, plus two individual scans of each of the dentures. I upload those to anatomage, and then they'll go ahead and give me the merged file back just like you've shown here. What they do is, is they go ahead and utilize some of those white bright markers on the inside portion of the denture and merges the files together. By doing that, then they can overlay an impression of the patient's soft tissue to match what you see here on the comb beam scan. Also continuing the rendering module, if I can go ahead and use that soft tissue separation technique with the cotton rolls, you can see I very easily can see the dentition of the patient's dentures. Slicing through different modes within the NVivo software, this allows us to distinctly see the restorative plan on the comb beam software visually seeing only the patient's mandibular denture here, and then toggling on the superimposition of the patient's scan of their denture alone. This allows us to go ahead and do an easy comb beam stitching of all of these different features together to make a computerized surgical guide for this particular patient. What we need to do is, is that once that's been complete, we can upload those plan files to Anatomage using the Anatom model service. We upload a series of DICOMs and potentially STL files. For this particular patient, if we did a maxillary and mandibular scan, we would have one patient scan wearing the maxillary and mandibular prostheses, one scan of the patient's maxillary denture alone, and one scan of the patient's mandibular denture alone both with the radiopaque PVS impression materials and without the patient. Also, Anatomage does require an STL file, either in the function of using an intraoral scanner to scan the actual radiopaque PVS impression material, or you can pour in a um, snap stone or a fast acting type of a stone into your uh, radiopaque PVS impression material and send in your models to Anatomage. What you'll get back is, is you'll get back this plan file which has your implant plan as well as the merge files and also the surgical guide ready for surgery. Simple, easy, and effective. This particular approach shows you everything's pretty much done for you except for the implant planning. You don't need to do any merging or any fabrication of the surgical guide. All of that is handled by Anatomage. This has been another episode of Learn Lodi, a free resource on how to market treatment plan place and maintain locator overdenture implants. Stay tuned for the video of this patient's surgical procedure. Thank you.